It almost seems rare these days to not only see a trade that works out equally well for both sides and how they benefit in a given deal, but even more rare to see a good trade or really a good transaction in general come from the Charlotte Hornets. And with the Hornets moving on from Terry Rozier, who was a prime trade candidate for them in exchange for Kyle Lowry on an expiring contract and getting a first round pick in the deal from the Miami Heat, the pick in question being a 2027 first round pick lottery protected. And if it doesn't convey, it becomes unprotected in 2028. I love this deal for both teams given the state of the Hornets who are obviously not in a position to be winning now and a player like Rogier who doesn't fit their timeline but is having the best season of his career taking advantage of his trade value being at its peak getting off his contract which still has two years left on his deal after this season and acquiring a first round pick and an expiring deal to free up cap space going into next season which now positions the hornets to have the most cap space in the nba going into next year a move with a semblance of direction from the hornets and according to reports the hornets aren't done making deals what are some of those potential deals that could go down leading up to the deadline on February 8th? Well, let's talk about it. As always, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, it would mean a great deal to me if you subscribed. And in return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Now, it's easy to make fun of the Charlotte Hornets and all the moves they've made over the years. The busted draft picks, the fat contracts they've handed out to mid-level players, and still year after year being an average to bottom feeder team in the NBA. And while I'm by no means saying this is some monumental trade that is going to turn their franchise around, not even close, but this is the first time in a while where, to me, the Hornets have finally signaled a proper direction. They've been especially bad the last two seasons. The year before that, they went to the play-in as the 10th seed and got beaten badly in that game. They haven't made the playoffs in almost a decade, and rather than making these moves where they try and bring in bigger names and signing them to long-term deals like Gordon Hayward or before that, Nicholas Batum, the Hornets have finally recognized we're going nowhere. And if we continue on this path, it's very likely we're going to lose LaMelo Ball if he demands a trade because LaMelo is the biggest name player or watch appeal that this franchise has had in over two decades. Yes, more so than Kemba Walker. And while it's going to be painful, filled with lots of losing in the short term, the Hornets are finally recognizing they need to stop this play at bringing in big-ish names just to try to maintain some semblance of relevancy. They're not relevant, except that build draft capital and assets you can work with towards the future and go from there. And moving off of Terry Rozier, like I said, capitalizing on his trade value when it's at its peak, getting off Rozier's contract, getting a first round pick in the deal, freeing up a ton of cap space for this offseason, and now focusing on moving all of their assets that don't fit their timeline. Now, they're not going to be able to get much for Gordon Hayward on an expiring deal. You might even be looking at a buyout situation. You may get lucky and get a second round pick in a deal for a team that is looking to salary dump one of their players, but unlikely. Now, I've said before, there is a world in which if the Hornets wanted to take on Zach Levine and see if him and Melo could do something special, then they could fork over a first round pick in a trade deal with Hayward, which would free up cap space for the Bulls going into this season by getting Levine's deal off of their books. But I personally don't think that's a smart move for the Hornets as it kind of puts them back into this perpetual state of mediocrity. But rather than focusing on Gordon Hayward, two players I would look to move from the Hornets are PJ Washington and Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges, I've seen my piece on him before. As someone who has a wife and two daughters and grew up with sisters, I have zero tolerance for domestic abuse, and this guy should never be able to play basketball again. But the off-court stuff aside, and if the NBA is seemingly going to let this guy just play like nothing happened, then Bridges, who is on an expiring deal, and a player who they likely won't look to re-sign, you should be able to get something for him. A player that is a strong scorer and in his prime. And then for PJ Washington, a solid player, an inconsistent player, but on a fairly team-friendly deal, and could be a solid role player for a contending level team. Should you be able to get some sort of draft capital or a young player in exchange for him? Yeah, I think so. Get his money off the books and free up even more cap space. And so you move on from Hayward, Washington, and Bridges, and you focus on building around LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller. You'd be bad for a while, more high lottery picks, as long as they don't blow their lottery picks like they have in the past, and you finally, finally start doing a proper rebuild. Now, as for the Miami Heat, because I realize I haven't mentioned anything about their takeaway in the deal, the Heat, as they really have always been, are trying to win now. They went to the finals last season, and while the Heat aren't as focused on the regular season, case in point, last year they nearly got taken out in the play-in and then went on to the finals as the eighth seed, but the Miami Heat also know that their roster is currently constructed, especially with Jimmy Butler getting older, aren't legit title contenders. And they don't want to run the risk of just being a few minutes away from being eliminated from playoff contention like they were last season in the play-in. And for the Heat, who have really struggled offensively this year, currently 20th in offensive rating, they're 26th in the NBA in points per game, they're second to last in overall field goal attempts, they don't get enough shots up. And they aren't efficient 
when they get those shots up. Bottom 10 in the league in overall field goal percentage. And so adding a player like Rozier, who can get you 20 points per night on fairly efficient shooting, getting a player like him in his prime that fits their goal of trying to win now, and also getting Rozier when they knew they had no intention of keeping Kyle Lowry. Getting Rozier and giving up a first to move off of Lowry rather than losing him for nothing this offseason is a solid return, especially when you desperately needed added offense, which Rozier provides in the backcourt. Don't get me wrong, Rozier's numbers are a bit inflated this season because he plays on a bad team and has had the green light for most of the year because LaMelo and Gordon Hayward have missed a good portion of the season. But he's still a valuable contributor to the Heat who are trying to up their pace, their number of shots, and overall shooting efficiency, both from deep and at the rim. Now, do I think this type of move puts Miami on the same tier as teams like the Celtics, Bucks, or Sixers? No, but it does make them better than they were before. And I also think that the Heat aren't done, as there are reports that they've been interested in DeMar DeRozan. Maybe they try and make a big push for Buddy Heel to add more scoring. Maybe they even make a big splash in going after DeJounte Murray. So while I don't think this move in isolation moves the Heat into contention status, I don't believe that this is the Heat's last move. They're not done. So anyway, in short, I think this is one of the more well-balanced trades and a win-win for both teams involved. And I think what's the most surprising piece of it is that the Hornets are actually making a smart decision. Feels weird to say that. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought of the trade here for Terry Rozier and Kyle Lowry. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.